Okay. Eric, you've started off your career as a teacher and then you um, took the course of criminology and now you're a criminologist. What internal resources you had to develop further from a teacher to a criminologist? To be honest, I, and I think of this often, the skills I learned through teaching, I use on a daily basis as a criminologist. Really. Because a teacher, when you're a teacher, I mean, I used to teach English. I know English, I, I know grammar. So to teach, you are really doing it for the benefit of someone else. You are really doing that. When and then you work in such a context of um, working with clients in, in the, with the cap of a criminologist, sort of, um, again, you are in that situation to guide others. It's not for you. And that is a huge similarity that I found between the two. Okay. What um, I really kind of strengthened, which skills which I gained through life and skills which I gained through teaching, and I keep strengthening with this career choice, communication skills and understanding different perspectives, um, uh, strategic planning, a lot of strategic planning, because the same as I used to do a lesson plan, yeah. And I used to do a very detailed lesson plan. I can imagine. imagine. Yeah. And it was handwritten. <laughs> oh, of course, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, the same way that I used to do a lesson plan, I tweaked that idea and I kind of create, kind of create a plan for the person that I would be um, guiding mm -hmm. or working with. Not a rigid plan, like yeah. Jafiri, but kind of... Um, the learning outcomes. Exactly, Not like outcomes of, of where we're going to go with mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. Not outcomes that I wish, but outcomes that are realistic for the person in front of me. Mm -hmm. We don't need to reach all the outcomes because unlike a teacher, unlike in a school setting, yeah. we don't have an exam at the yeah. end of this. But it, this kind of ideology that it's good to have a direction of where you're going to go with a classroom, I believe in it a lot. And I know other professionals do it. I mean, in my field, there are care plans and everything. But it's, it's something that I, I really kept on um, believing in. You know, it's good to have a direction with a, with a person, with, with someone you're working with, direction with when you're working on a project. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> another point, <laughs> I used to notice that my kids, when I was a teacher, they learned the most through fun through interactiveness. Yeah. When I used to do a whole day preaching about grammar, it work. and I used to lose my own train of thought, and I'm like, what, what am I talking about right now? You know, I see a random I or a I E ed or Maltese, for example. <laughs> you know, and, and uh, it's like, I was noticing that this is not the only way to teach. And if the teacher is getting frustrated, let alone the students that are being forced mm -hmm. to sit in the class. So uh, I started incorporating more fun activities. Um, for example, I used to do a whole day. We used to do kind of like a treasure hunt with my students around Medina. But ultimately they were learning prepositions, grammar, yeah. you know, because they'd have like a little uh, adventure sheet that they have to follow. And I was teaching the same lesson ultimately. And it's more effective because you're um, associating things with with memory, with 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 there is it's more it's more um, uh, using the senses. Your sight, there is smell, there is the experiences that you've um, you're enjoying something, and you you've, you're putting much uh, many many of our senses into practice. So it's easier for our brain to recall that memory. That's right. It's a moment. Yeah. You're creating a moment, and that is something that. And then I was having fun with them, you know? So it's something that I really realized that there are different ways to um, connect or to, to transfer knowledge or, or exchange information with people. And that is something and then I started to apply for me as Erica when communicating. Um, so I really realized that not everyone learns in the same way. I am one of them. I, I was that person in class that I would just sit at the desk and look at the board and what is this? And I just zone out, you know, so I was one of them. Um, as I'm saying, as a teacher, obviously now 
it was even more amplified realizing that not only that I don't learn in the traditional way but the kid in front of me doesn't even learn in my way or the traditional way some people like to watch videos some people need to write everything yeah. down and to play a game some people are actually more comfortable to sit in class and stay quiet and listen and write there are so many different ways of learning mm-hmm. ultimately in all our different ways you are somehow creating a moment to remember that to remember mm-hmm. what you're learning that i also transfer it now um, at the current uh, roles that I play, that when I wish to educate or empower or guide whoever I have in front of me, mm-hmm. after getting a bit more familiar with the person and I start to realize perhaps their character or their likes or dislikes, I try to find ways that it is interesting for them to engage in the session, for example. Mm-hmm. So sometimes we literally do a group project, which takes around a week you know it's not just coloring in it's it's a project everyone's hands-on we're all discussing why we are drawing this picture for example and as we're drawing someone randomly remembers a memory has nothing to do with what we are doing but now we are enhancing the moment and it's it's very beautiful innovative and a breath of fresh air because then we'll get stuck in a routine yeah ultimately the goals of, of my roles are are the same but they're always there the goals they're always going to be fixed Mm -hmm. but how are you going to approach and get to those goals yeah be creative find different ways to not only um, enrich the experience of your client or or whoever you are working with but also enrich your own experience enjoy what you're doing love what you're doing everyone has a difficult job so i'm not saying i go to work every day whoa You know, I have a full day here. It's not always like that. I'm not saying anything that's a secret. I'm sure mm. you can have those days too sometimes. For sure, yeah. Um, but help yourself to a happy day, mm-hmm. sort of. Help yourself to a happy day. Mm-hmm. So that's very interesting. Yeah. It's very hard as well. So um, I, was, I, I say this all the time, and it's an own fact as well. Our brains are wired to think in a negative way. Mm-hmm. And they are built that way, evolutionary, so that they can protect us from harm. So it's a, a double the effort to think positive and to think happy thoughts as well. So um, as simple as it may sound, and as cliche as it may sound as well, it's very hard as well. Of so course. we have to um, consciously make an effort to think positively and to see the class half full as well at times. And so I'm a firm believer that, that you can derive many lessons even from, from, from dark times. And even if you're not able to do it at that time, because obviously of the situation that it's not, it's a difficult situation. Sometime after that, that it's good to reflect on the, on the way that you reacted, how that things made you feel, your emotions that, that you were experiencing at that moment. That's right your thoughts and your thought process at that moment and what you can learn from that that that, that, that mm-hmm. particular situation 